Hello, sir. I hope you're having a good day. So this is for the final review uh, presentation of my project. So there are two parts to this video. This is the first part. In this first part, I'll be explaining the technical description. I'll be explaining what are the theoretical concepts that goes into this. This took a while to make because there is so many details to be explained. But uh, then due to the time constraint, I had to cut, cut short a lot of it. So I'll be moving through these slides uh, because these were already explained in previous review and a proper explanation of this is given in the working model as well. Uh, literature survey uh, key objectives has been achieved. Uh, experimental design is the whole point of the, the other video. Same system diagram uh, was explained in previous reviews in review one. And then mechanical design aspect and the materials based, science based uh, design were all uh, mentioned in uh, review two, final CAD model. Uh, so the actual model uh, was made uh, made like this, and then it was uh, 3D printed. The few three of the components inside are 3D printed. Uh, this is these are the two components. Uh, this one was attached. So this is how it looks. And then uh, there is a 3D printing simulation. You have to, in order to 3D print, you need to use a software to do it. Uh, and then final model, you, as you saw the CAD model, this is the final thing. The first, this is the system one, and uh, this is in which this has the system two and system three. System two is uh, electrically actuated, and then system three is a material based design. So, all of that is explained in detail in the second video. The most important for part I wanted to focus on in this video was the electronical electrical components. This needs a lot of explanation, a lot of theory that goes behind this technical uh, descriptions so i'll uh, give a brief uh, there are two microcontrollers used in this mega and uno in in order to cut short this uh, uh, presentation i have reduced the amount of uh, i have only explained one microcontroller i have explained arduino mega because that's a more complex one and the bigger version of the uno uno is just scaled to down version then there is dht11 uh, sensor which is temperature and humidity sensor, gas sensor, LCD, uh, DC motor, and uh, there is, uh, yeah, and most importantly, uh, more importantly, uh, the motor shield L293D motor shield. So, these are the main components of this uh, project. Now, coming to uh, DHT11, DHT11 is uh, used to fire. It's it's used. DHT11 is used to uh, uh, detect uh, temperature and humidity in the atmosphere. Uh, so why it's used is explained uh, in the second video. How it works is uh, so first of all the humidity part. Humidity sensing component has like uh, two electrodes with moisture holding substrate sandwiched between them. So basically the ions are released by the substrate as water vapor and is absorbed by it, which turn increases the conductivity between the electrodes. The change in resistance between the two electrodes is like the proportional to relative humidity. Uh, so what happens is higher the hum relative humidity decreases the resistance between the electrode, while the lower relative humidity increases the resistance between the electrodes. So, so as you can see, there's a graph on this NTC curve, which means negative temperature uh, coefficient. Basically, the concept is that when the resistance decreases, the temperature increases. This is the principle how the calibration is, uh, how the reading is done. So, so when the, uh, and then, uh, so uh, this is a picture of showing how the uh, internal uh, chemistry of this is. So, this is a capacitance based uh, sensing uh, unit. So, Sensing element thermistor sensing the humidity sensing capacitor has two electrodes with moisture holding substrate. Uh, the IC process, so yeah, then after the thermistor processing, then the data is sent to the IC, which has a converter and uh, it processes the data and uh, compares it to the calibrated value and then gives a most uh, possible uh, accurate value Be after the uh, uh, <coughs> after. After processing the data, so this uses a digital pin, uh, which is connected to the D11 of Arduino Mega, uh, and then there is a plus plus is a five volt and ground pin. That's it. Uh, so it's a wire communication. Uh, 
it uses uh, a wire communication protocol to communicate with the uh, Arduino. Then there is a MQ2 sensor. MQ2 sensor is again a module used for uh, leak. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, uh, is used to detect uh, leak detection, which is done by the digital. We didn't use digital, we used the analog part of this one. Uh, so it is used for uh, detecting hydrogen, LPG, CH4, uh, monoxide. Uh, it has a fast response time. Uh, and uh, all that. The operating voltage is for, for this is 5 volts. Uh, and then this top part is a mesh that protects the internal working of this. Uh, it's like an anti-explosion network. Then there's a clamp link. Uh, those are the outer part. Uh, there are many uh, types of uh, MQ sensors, but uh, we are specifically using two because of the two main things that it can detect. That is uh, carbon monoxide and uh, uh, LPG. Uh, smoke, smoke, sorry. Smoke is also a smoke as well. So. So how this works is uh, so when uh, so inside this uh, this is obviously semiconductor. So how it has is uh, it has uh, aluminium oxide, which is like the sensing element, and then there is it's a ceramic uh, aluminium oxide based ceramic, and which has a coating of tin dioxide. Tin is why tin dioxide? Tin dioxide is like something that is very much sensitive to these gases that are shown in the screen. Uh, so when so so. Uh, again, uh, somewhat of the same principle. So when the tin dioxide is heated up in air at high temperature, yeah, keep in mind the sensor, you can't, uh, when once it's continuously starting to work for a long time, this thing gets very hot. Uh, so when the tin dioxide is heated up in air at high temperature, the oxygen absorbed on the surface in clean air, uh, the donor electrons in tin dioxide are like attra attracted towards the uh, oxygen, which is then absorbed on the surface of the sensing material. This then in turn uh, prevents the current flow. So in like present, uh, so in like in presence of reducing gases, the surface density of the absorbed uh, oxygen decreases as it reacts with the reducing gases. So then the electrons are then released into tin dioxide, which again goes the opposite way and then increase uh, allows the current to uh, flow through. So current flow is increased by that. So that's how the sensor system works. Now. The coming to the computational part of this, this has a tiny IC in it. Uh, in order to uh, take these data and then process it, and it also has a potentiometer, which is used into uh, used to uh, calibrate the sensitivity of this. So. <coughs> so coming to the circuitry part. Uh, uh, here there is a technical specifications coming to the circuitry part there is uh, again this also uses wire communication with Arduino Mega using the PWM pins uh, but it uses the analog pin which uh, okay sorry not Mega and the you know so VCC GND uh, ground and A0 and uh, D0 A0 is the pin that we are using in this project because we need the values of what's uh, what uh, ppm of gas is being detected uh, why not use D0 because in D0 digital output it only detects the gas which is not what we are hoping to look look into so left side is the technical descriptions so that's it for the two sensors that are used in this so the rest the all the data collection of the entire system all three things combined is done by this uh, particular uh, two sensors DHT11 and MQ2 sensor moving on uh, L293 motor shield. This is for the DC motors. Now, uh, in order to power these DC motors, I have used these uh, motor shields because uh, in order to lift the weight using the gears, the spur and pin in pin in gear, you need a lot more uh, power. So, when you use this uh, motor shield, you are able to give more power to it. Uh, this motor shield can uh, handle up to 24 volts of uh, current with. Uh, uh, 24 volts of voltage and uh, about uh, 2 amps of current which can be then give uh, sent to the sent to the dc motor so explaining the this shield how it works is there are two ic's one uh, ic is used for uh, uh, 
controlling and uh, processing the da data for these two DC motors. There can be two DC motors connected here and here. There can be two DC motors connected here and here. This ones are controlled by this. These two are controlled by this. This, the entire interfacing is done using a shift register, as you can see on the screen. Then the rest of it is, uh, yeah, of course, uh, one more thing is uh, this, uh, these three, uh, these 24 pins. Uh, basically, these are analog pins, which in this we will be using A0 to connect the gas sensor to the Arduino Uno. So the connection goes through the shield into the uh, Uno. Then there's the ground pins and then there are uh, 5 volt pins. There's a 9 volt pin here and then 2 ground pins and 5 volt. Then there is a jumper. So for this application, as I said, I need an external power supply, which I did give. Uh, so that is, uh, that's about, uh, okay, so that, for that is given through this external power supply. Then you have to remove the jumper in order to uh, supply those kind of uh, uh, voltages. So here you can see how this would work. In this, we didn't need four motors. We need only two. So I used uh, only these two. The rest uh, then A0. This is where the data was inputted from. So the rest of the things are explained in detail uh, in the PPT. You can just uh, have a look at it. Coming to the most important, I think this is called the brain of the bot is Arduino microcontroller uh, at mega 2560 54. It has about uh, 54 uh, uh, pins in total, which has a, which is like 14 of them are used for uh, PWM pins, which is the most, uh, which is the ones that we are using in this uh, uh, project. Uh, <coughs> so the technical specifications is uh, it has, it can handle up to 10 to 12 volts of uh, uh, energy. We, we are only providing five. Uh, then there is uh, the clock speed is about 16 megahertz and uh, it has a flash memory of 256 in order to store uh, uh, software and uh, softwares and other uh, codes. Then there is a RAM of uh, uh, 8KB and then EEPROM of uh, a ROM of about 4KB. So that's pretty much it. The microcontrollers, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, so moving on. Uh, Yes, uh, uh, yeah, so I wanted to explain about the communication part. Uh, Arduino Mega 2560 has uh, like, mm, uh, it can support, uh, it can support, uh, it has, mm, it can support multiple types of uh, communications, like uh, it can support to the computer or another Arduino or other microcontrollers. It has uh, hardware such as like UARTs or uh, serial communication and, and everything. Uh, so yeah, basically uh, Arduino uh, IC, uh, Arduino Uno, uh, sorry, Mega can support uh, I2C protocols and SPI communications, which uh, which we didn't have to use, but they are there that we can be used. So SDA and SEC can be connected to four or five uh, digital pins. Uh, okay, so moving on. Uh, so that's pretty much about Arduino. So all the details in this presentation are given. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so yeah, coming to the communication details. So as you can see, the two sensors in this uh, project were used. You uh, were connected, communicating through the uh, Omega by using wire communication. So there's a single wire that uh, controls all the data. Uh, then there's just another two wires to give a ground and voltage. That's how the MQ2 and the DHT11 works. However, in order to do the interfacing that is done through the LCD, that uh, LCD, uh, well, usually LCDs uh, use uh, I2C protocol to communicate, but uh, in order to do that, I need a, another module, uh, I2C module in order to do that. I couldn't uh, get it in time, so I'm using the LCD itself. Uh, so using an LCD alone, then there's a small chip that helps you to create the characters that works very well with the library uh, liquid crystal. Uh, so this is parallel communication that is uh, that is how you communicate with the uh, Arduino Mega. Oh, sorry, uh, yeah, Arduino Mega. So these connections are uh, explained uh, 
here. So VSS, VDD, uh, these are VSS is ground, VDD is uh, power, the main power supplies, and then V0 is for the LCD, the power uh, register switch. Then there is a register select data input and output. These things control the uh, signals that go in and out of the display, the LCD uh, with the chip. Then moving on, uh, you have, uh, there are two ways to control the, uh, no, two ways to do data transfer through the LCD. One is a four bit mode and then there's an eight bit mode. Four bit mode is uh, usually uh, preferred over eight bit because uh, eight bit though is faster, you don't uh, exactly uh, need it in every uh, point. So for us, uh, for our uh, easy, easy using, we have used a four bit method. Uh, so in order to do that, there are four different uh, data pins, which are D2, D3, uh, D4, and uh, yeah, D2, D3, D4, and D5 that, that are connected in the Arduino Mega to these uh, 11 to 14 pins. In the last uh, A and E are used to for the backlit. Uh, some places are dark, some places are uh, there you have to provide light. So that is uh, determined uh, by these two pins. So that's how the uh, parallel communication works. So yeah, as I've mentioned here, communication protocols. Uh, yeah, wire uh, communication is how the sensors uh, the sensors work with the mm, uh, with the microcontrollers. So as you can see, the wire protocol uses a single wire interface for data devices. The yeah, main thing in this uh, wire communication, there is a master and always there is a slave. So master in this case is the microcontroller and uh, slave is uh, the sensor. The sensor uh, gives all its data to the MCU which processes the coming data. And then these are the technical specifications. It uses a half duplex communication mechanism. And then, yeah thing about a parallel communication wire is it's it's uh, it's easy to do the uh, the the wiring for this uh, parallel communication is a huge uh, mess like there are uh, 19 20 wires in a very small confined space to make it work system diagram this is a circuit diagram for the uh, system one this is supposed to be arduino mega but uh, in tinkercad i couldn't find it I've used Arduino Uno. Uh, then there is a temperature sensor. This is supposed to depict a DHT11. Again, DHT11 was not found in the uh, in the in the Tinkercad. Then the LCD display. All these. This is how this uh, this works. I made this thing by myself. Uh, I didn't copy it from anywhere. I made it on my own. That's why the circuits look a little messy. Uh, sorry for that. Then this is the potentiometer, and then this is the buzzer LCD. Uh, why all are these these components are explained detailed in the uh, project description so system 2 again circuit is very well explained in the other video i hope you look into it this is the photo of that uh, as you can see see the the gas sensor is connected to this pin uh, analog output and then these two are there and that's it uh, the power supply then uh, these these are the two motors uh, in this, the motors are connected. One is connected in clockwise. The other one is connected in the opposite direction because the uh, it has to give opposite uh, way, directions in order to make the gear move. Uh, uh. Then the computer programming was explained in review one uh, what it is. So basically, it uh, acts as an interface. Uh, number one thing for, for computer programming is to make the processing. But uh, another part of this is to sh show the data in real time. So if, they, if there is a change or sudden anomaly, this uh, the software that's inside the in in the microcontroller can easily catch that and then sends the data accurately to the LCD display or suppose the LED and and uh, creates the uh, uh, accurate function. So that's what the computer program is is here for. So I want to explain the code for this very quickly. So uh, thanks to the guys, uh, to the people who contribute to the GitHub libraries, I was able to find two of the libraries, which is one is Liquid Crystal for the LCD and DHT for the uh, DHT11 sensor. These two uh, libraries tremendously decreases the the complexity of this program and helps in uh, far speed uh, increasing the uh, boosting the speed of the 
development of this code. So explaining the code quickly, this is a DHT11 pins definition, which pin it's going to be defined to. So it uses A0, the analog pin of the mega board. This is to define the uh, the define the sensor itself. So you have to define the sensor and which pin it's connected to. Moving on to the liquid crystal disk LCD, which 12 and 11 is the or, or data pin, uh, the power pins, which says if there is transmission of data or not. So yes and no, parallel communication. So hence this many pins. 5432 is for uh, communicating the data to the LCD. So that is done using these four pins. Now coming to that, uh, again, you have defined the DHT after the library is being done. So DHT pin, that is A0, DHT type, that is uh, DHT11. So there are different types of DHT uh, sensors, DHT22, DHT11. I've used DHT11, so it's been defined over here. Then coming to the setup, this is to start, uh, initialize the LCD, uh, because as you know, LCD has on a fund, it's a parallel communication. So this is how you use the, this is how you initiate the LCD. First you initiate, you uh, then open the serial monitor as well, and then begin 16.0.2. This is the character display. And then you also uh, initialize the, uh, the DHT11 sensor to start it, to start reading the temperature, calibration, everything. Then there's a delay. And then coming to the loop part, which is what will be running again and again. Uh, DHT11 re reads the temperature using this command. It's stored to the uh, variable T, and then it clears the LCD. What's a, whatever is written in the previous command, it will be erased completely, and then the new set will uh, it will be defined again zero zero uh, reset, and then it shows temperature, which gives T, and temp prints degree Celsius. Then you set it to the second uh, second line, and then you just print humid, humid to show humidity, and then you from the detected humidity you print uh, H. H has already been defined in setup. So moving on, then those uh, this H and the T values, if these things cross the threshold from, uh, then this if else statement gets uh, gives a true value, and then it detects this, which is a normal situation which is supposed to be there. But in unfortunate case, if it, it does, if it crosses the threshold, then these system, this statement will be activated. So that means the buzzer, the red light, all of it will go on. Then the buzzer will have a T T T. So that's where the delay uh, and the buzzer's frequency. This is the frequency of the buzzer. So that's the first half of the code. The second half of the code is. Uh, for the motor shield alone, there's a good, uh, there's a very good library uh, which helps in simplifying the code again, which is the AF motor dot H, which is used, used for uh, L293 motor shield. So there is two motors uh, that is defined, three and four, which is um, three and four is the motors, the DC motors are here. Then the sensor threshold is to see at what at what. Uh, threshold you want to activate the system that's why 435 that's 435 ppm the system is supposed to be activated this is done for the testing of my uh, of the working model however in a real world scenario this threshold will be much higher maybe about 1000 or 2000 moving on uh, the void setup pin mode smoke a0 smoke is again an analog input and output so and it is defined here a0 so that is here a0 this is the variable Input is, uh, it, is, it takes input. So you start the serial monitor, uh, you define these. Uh, first you set the speed, uh, at what temp speed the DC motor moves. Uh, just make sure that this, uh, both motors uh, rotate at the same speed. Uh, then you give a command uh, to initialize it. So that's what this command motor run release is used for. And coming to the loop part, again, uh, you have to print the uh, data on the screen which is why we are using the analog in the first place so you print a is a naught then you print the data coming from the coming from the sensor and then uh, yeah this is to value of it p parts per million coming to the if statement uh, the condition statements uh, if the if the value crosses above the threshold that means you have to activate the motors so this is done uh, then three times in order to maximize the efficiency uh, i saw this in one of the projects in youtube that they 
does three times to not like it uses spraying mechanism so that's why it releases and then goes back up and then releases three times and then once it uh, once the threshold uh, once it comes down the threshold then it just goes back up all together so that's why that's what this statement does uh, the code for that is used in these uh, systems are in the report kindly look into that experimental design is uh, already explained uh, thermal stress test i did because i just had to make sure that the outer surface because see, the whole thing is about fire systems so i had to make sure that if i had to make this as a product it would be able to withstand the forces uh, the thermal stresses that could be incurred in an event of a failure uh, fme is done to find out how the uh, weak points of my um, of my uh, product uh, one of the key points is uh, gear systems i had to make it uh, more uh, reliable uh, then the sensor systems it could be made of better uh, quality sensor systems outer casing basically passed the test but uh, fatigue is still an issue in it uh, materials the rate the weight of the material could, uh, weight of the material could be reduced and better materials could be used cost analysis in total uh, this entire project costed me about 5500 uh, in order to build the whole thing up uh, but uh, i don't think that is the case if i were to sell this as a product it would cost me about uh, 1000 bucks a product to actually sell it so 5500 i can consider it to be like an r and d cost uh, anyway details of that is uh, explained in the cost analysis uh, constraints uh, constraints are explained in the uh, uh, pro the working model of video and then the results and conclusion and this is one of the main things i wanted to focus on was uh, i am little new to this uh, field i learned a lot during the entire course but however uh, the time i got in my hand was not enough to learn uh, how to use uh, wi-fi and uh, everything so in this one of the main things i could have done was using node mcu and a microprocessor then uh, sending the uh, alerts for uh, the temperature and humidity through Wi-Fi to a server which can be connected to a person's device. Now, for the most part, I did figure out the the, the connections and everything, but I I could not successfully uh, do the connection between uh, the server and the uh, uh, node MCU through the Wi-Fi. I didn't have enough time to figure it out. Obviously, if I had some more time to figure these things out. I would have uh, also included that could have made this project much, much amazing. So if there is going to be a version two, this is what that's going to be in going into the project in future. So these are things that I wish I'll maybe do it in the future. The rest of them are uh, pretty, the rest of the things are basic uh, modifications, but for the most part, I wish I could add a microprocessor and node MCU to make the uh, the alert signal reach directly to the authorities. Right now, it's someone has to be there nearby to hear the system, which is not ideal, but still works. Uh, so yes, so these are the things uh, that I've, I wanted to uh, tell you and uh, I hope uh, you like this presentation and uh, please watch the second video to understand the working model of this. And uh, thank you for watching. I know this is very long, but uh, since you mentioned specifically that this has to be extremely detailed, I thought I will put all the details I possibly can. So thank you for watching and uh, hope you have a good day, sir. Thank you.